Mark Rogers TV with you just about 10 hours before the college football playoff committee must make its final decision on the top four teams in the country and the playoff chase in the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl. In this particular video, we distinguish between Baylor and TCU. This has been a hot topic, probably the biggest topic surrounding this playoff system for the past five or six weeks, ever since Baylor beat TCU in Waco 61-58, a game in which the Horned Frogs led by 21 points in the fourth quarter. Most people, I think if you took a poll around America in watching TCU and Baylor, think the Horned Frogs are the better football team. I'm not going to debate that. Actually, if they played on a neutral field tomorrow, I would probably, if I had to bet my mortgage, I would put it on TCU. But you know what? That should not matter. It shouldn't matter what we think. We need to go with the facts. So hear me out on this one. Baylor TCU. The simple argument is that they both went 11-1, uh, and one, and Baylor won the football game over TCU, went 61-58. to 58. Okay, the argument for TCU that I'm hearing, besides just the eyeball test that they look better, is that, number one, that the game was played in Waco and that they dominated most of the game, leading by 21 points. Actually, if you look at the box score and look at the yardage totals, Baylor outgained TCU in that game by about 250 yards. So put that to bed. Now let's look at a more logical breakdown of this situation. Again, head-to-head -head should win out. People have said that uh, since the game was played in Waco and Vegas usually gives three points to the home team, that if it was on a neutral field, that it would be a tie. Well, we don't have ties in college football, of course. That would go to overtime, and then who knows who would win the game, and that's hypothetical anyway. Uh, also, that if the game was played again, that TCU would win. Well, taking the neutral field argument into it, that's ridiculous because if that were the case, we would have to go through every college football game this season and we'd have to figure out what the score would have been had the two teams played on a neutral field and had they played at the other team's home. That's pathetic. That's ridiculous. Of course, it's hypothetical. It's just a gauge that Vegas uses. It's not actual reality. We know that home field advantage varies on the day, on the team, on the crowd, the opponent, everything. That's a rough estimate by Vegas. That's a general estimate, three points. I think it's more difficult to play in Death Valley than it is at Tulsa, for example. Okay, that's an estimate. Point number two, let's look at it this way. Let's say Oregon and Florida State. Now let's not take those two particular teams per se, but just hypothetically, Oregon and Florida State played week one, week two, and they played at Florida State. And let's say that Florida State won that game 61 to 58. Just, just picking a score, 61 to 58, Florida State won the game. And then for the rest of the season, let's say that Oregon completely trounced the Pac-12, beat everybody 50 to nothing. And Florida State squeaked through the ACC, 21 to 20, 14 to 13, 28, 27. And everybody believed that the Pac-12, and based on the results, as far as we could tell, was the much better conference. The Pac-12 was great, and the ACC was garbage. Okay, even then, I would argue at the end of the regular season, at 11-1 and 11-1, and and that Florida State, based on the head-to-head -head result, should be given the benefit of the doubt and be ranked ahead of Oregon. But I would at least understand the argument that somebody would claim, okay, they did play, but they played at Florida State. It was a great game, and it was week one or week two. It was a long time ago, and Florida State barely won. But since then, Oregon has just, against a gauntlet of a schedule, has just run through it and blasted everybody really good. Florida State's played nobody, and they barely win. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't validate that argument. Uh, or I wouldn't agree with it, but I would validate it. I, I would at least understand that argument based on track record. But that's not the case here. TCU and Baylor, I, don't, I can't select unless I go just within the Big 12. It's impossible to select two teams that are more comparable. This is the easy comparison. They play 12 games, and nine of them are exactly the same. These are two of the teams that we can compare. They're both 11-1, and, and again, 9 of 12 games are exact. 
It's not like the SEC or the Big Ten or the ACC. If they had two teams, we had to compare uh, because they play much different conference schedules. They play the exact conference schedule. And so many people point to that Minnesota win for TCU. Yes, Baylor should have scheduled somebody out of conference. But Minnesota, really, are we're going we're gonna to break the tie based on a win over Minnesota in 8-4, and four, a good football team, uh, a fringe top 25, top 30 team. But we're going to break the tie based on that and not based on what happened when the actual two teams were on the field against each other. That's crazy. That is crazy. On top of that, if you look at the results and the performances of these two teams against other Big 12 opponents, they're very comparable. So, for example, yes, TCU went to West Virginia and they won by one point at the gun, losing by nine in the fourth quarter and pulled it out based on bad clock management by West Virginia, while Baylor went to West Virginia and lost by two touchdowns. But we also have an example where Oklahoma, one of the better teams in the Big 12, Baylor beat the Sooners by 34. TCU beat them at home by four. Pretty good difference there. They both had their struggles against uh, lesser competition. For TCU, it was barely getting by Kansas, 34-30, losing that game in the second half. For Baylor, it was blowing a big lead against Texas Tech, holding on 48-46. So they both have their, their bad moments and their big pinnacle moments against better competitions. But it is basically the same. And they played head-to-head. Head-to-head needs to matter, especially when the rest of the track record is so comparable. Identical when it, you're talking about nine of the 12 games. Regardless of what happens with Ohio State, the College Football Playoff Committee needs to get this one right and rank Baylor ahead of TCU. Regardless of what anybody thinks, who the better team is. On the field, Baylor won, and then their track record held up just as favorably as TCU. That's all there is to it. Need to hear your argument now. TCU versus Baylor, right here on Mark Rogers TV.